The debate on trade and the environment has become a very constructive part of the WTO system. Uh, 25 years ago, one was careful not even to mention the word environment in this building. But nowadays, uh, it's recognized that trade, sustainable development linkage is an important part of the WTO. And in the environment regime, UNEP and the multilateral environmental agreements also recognize that their connections with trade are very important. The WTO uh, does a lot more on the environment and I think the public understanding of the importance of the WTO and the fact that it's not a threat to the environment also helps improve public acceptance of the WTO and support for the trading system and trade liberalization. You have to make sure that the environment side gets a fair hearing in the WTO dispute settlement system uh, to make sure that environmental expertise is given to the panels, that the panels include people who have some experience in the environment. And so far, that's, that's what's happened in the key environmental cases that we've uh, had. I think it's also important at the national level that trade and environment officials of each country work together. And that's been one of the byproducts of this debate uh, over the past 25 years, that uh, in the WTO, in the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, we have found that uh, at the national level, policymakers weren't linking these issues very well, but because there was an international debate and governments had to prepare a position for the international organizations, that we had much more cooperation and coordination between the ministries in environment, development, trade, commerce, even labor, than there had been in previous times. The WTO rules are carefully designed so that they provide members with maximum policy space, but they're also designed to make sure that that policy space is not abused to engage in protectionism that is hidden behind the exercise of policy space. So sometimes that takes some working out and uh, take some judgment by the WTO panels and the appellate body, but generally speaking, there's a great deal of policy space so, that it, so long as, as it is not abused. I think there are challenges for governments at two levels. International, which is what we deal with here in the WTO, and in many other places like the UN climate change negotiations, but also there are important domestic challenges for government. And the very first thing that you need to do at home is to make sure that your environment, sustainable development objectives are well aligned with the settings in your economy. And just one example of how that might apply. If you want to encourage companies to have sustainable production, if you want to encourage them to have renewable energy, then it makes sense that your regulation has a price on carbon so that that gives a price incentive, an economic incentive to companies to go for the lower impact uh, production. So I think that's a basis. And then when you get into the international sphere, there are some very legitimate concerns which we see right throughout this, this trade and environment discussion by some countries who feel that they will be unfavorably disadvantaged by other countries deciding to put in place very high environmental standards and then using pressure and threat of trade measures against those countries who are unable perhaps to meet those standards for reasons of their own stage of development. And this requires a degree of confidence building and a sense that countries are not going to be forced into actions and standards that are at their stage of development are inappropriate for them. So I think that's where the WTO, along with its other partner uh, agencies, has made a big contribution over the last, well actually 20 years or so, when this uh, issue first started to arise. And we've seen some of the fruits of that described in the discussions today at, at our meeting. It's early days for WTO dispute settlement dealing with issues like this. 
Um, I think one also has to distinguish between two different types of measures with multiple objectives. On the one hand, you can have measures where the two objectives work well together. For instance, you can have a measure that uh, tries to provide uh, a label uh, for the purposes of good consumer information. And why? Because the consumers care about the environment, so it's really uh, consistent uh, ob uh, objectives that one has in a measure like that. But then the much more difficult question is what do you do about measures where the two objectives conflict with each other, where it's a zero-sum game? And it's only really now that we're starting to see cases like that coming through, and a few of those have been decided. It's clear from the agreements that provided that a measure meets certain conditions, it can be adopted to protect at least the environment of a WTO member, possibly also the global commons and maybe even beyond that. It's a, that's one area which is very difficult. However, if we are limiting ourselves to the uncontroversial topic, which is that one can protect one's own environment at least, how can this be reconciled with uh, trade interests? It's tricky, but essentially uh, the way that the rules are structured say that you have to adopt the measure in a sensible way, and that sensible way is then defined in terms of being uh, the least trade restrictive. Now, to me, I think this is reasonable. A good administration should be able to meet these conditions. Uh, it's essentially the principle of proportionality. And usually when cases fail to do this, when the, the measure doesn't achieve the right balance between apparently protecting the environment and trade interests, it's usually the flaw of the measure rather than a flaw in the rules.